the Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. You'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Let's do this thing! The Dining at Disney podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Welcome to the Dining at Disney podcast. I'm Kristen, and with me is Bubba. We are longtime Disney Park annual pass holders who absolutely love Disney food. Yeah. So if this is your first time, <laughs> welcome. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you know when we post new content. It is, what show are we doing today, Bubba? Uh, best and worst of... Dining experience. Oh, happy hour show. Oh, the happy hour. My bad. Yes. <laughs> I thought you meant topic. No, this is our happy hour show where everybody has a drink in hand, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and we just mingle and talk. There you go. Yes, and today we have with us, we have Kat, our Corey. She is our correspondent, as well as Tony Castelnova from Disney by the Numbers and Disney Parks Podcast. And back again is Jewel. She is all about city strollers and food. And food. Yes. Great creations. <laughs> awesome food. The resident chef. That's true. Her, the food she's been posting lately, she's been making at home, is killing me. Oh, my gosh. Why do you have to tempt me like that? What are you eating? What is that? It looks like a delicious cookie. It's a keto uh, chocolate chip cookie. Oh, my. So I tried keto it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jewel, so, Jules. It looks good. It tastes okay. <laughs> <laughs> And that sums up the keto diet. And we're yeah, done. Exactly, right? <laughs> and that's a wrap. Unless yeah. you're really all about meat and you don't like anything sweet, then the keto diet is going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah. it's, difficult. it's very difficult. So, but um, I don't like Cokes anymore. And I was a Coca Cola addict for many, many years. I drink one and now it's like, ugh. So it took me three months to get over my Coke addi addiction. Addiction. <laughs> addiction, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was so, we got that the first five minutes. She was a Coke head now. She <laughs> and Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the real thing. Anyway. <laughs> Hey guys! <laughs> so uh, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> I guess we know. How, I guess we know how Jules doing. Tony, how are you doing? Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on a keto diet, so I'm doing great. No keto, no coke addiction. Good for him. No keto, no. I, I had a Mountain Dew addiction back in the day. Oh. That's a different story. See, I've never I don't been drink that. Get into drinking Mountain Dew at all. I had a friend who, like, was hers was Mellow Yellow, not Mountain Dew. Mellow Yellow. Had to have Mellow Yellow. Mm. I just, mm. I have never been able to get into the taste of either of those. I don't really like Coke. It was a sugar oh. fix. It had nothing to do with the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> it was the fact uh, that I was working 18 hours a day. Yeah, that'll do it. And that was, and yeah. that was, like, before the surge see what i did there of uh of, uh, of, of energy drinks because yeah. for yeah. the longest time and i remember i think maybe the first energy drink that came out was bolt oh jolt 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 right, jolt. <laughs> bolt i'm thinking the disney dog no jolt <laughs> and, uh, yes exactly and, and people bought that by the pallet full because i remember right. when i was in college that thing came out and people were like oh i gotta buy me some jolt i'm like no you don't That'll that'll rot your teeth. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. Anyway, that's an '80s gamers drink right there. It was Joel? No doubt. <laughs> I, I can't get past Pitfall. <laughs> I never, or Joel Cola, mom. I never could get into drinking the energy drinks. Mm -mm. There is one that I don't mind the taste of. Uh, it's called is it Bang. I think is the oh, name. Bang. Of yes. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. have a lot of flavors. They oh, have one. Bow, bow. Cotton candy. Flavor. Cotton candy. That, I haven't had that one yet, but oh. a lot of people are buying that one. Yeah. It tastes wow. just like cotton candy. Nice. And anything that cat. tastes like cotton candy is my weakness. Like, I love cotton candy ice cream. Oh. 
There you go. I wish Disney didn't serve or have Monster Energy. That's the worst energy drink, in my opinion, is Monster. Okay, we're not going to get that Monster, uh, you know, money. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. No Monster. <laughs> I want to get that. Sponsored, right? Sponsored by. <laughs> sponsored by. <laughs> not get Disney it's delicious. Podcast. Not, not sponsored by Monster. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nutritious. So what, Look how what green are it is. you drinking today, Bubba? Uh, I am drinking a favorite in Disney California adventure. There you which go. Which is the red oh, trolley yeah. ale. Nicely done. Paul Strauss. And I'm actually using my, I'm using my sipper, oh. which, do you know which one this is? Yeah, it's a birthday sipper. Birthday Mickey. The birthday the 90th? sipper. 90th birthday. No, because today is my last day being in my 30s. Oh. Tomorrow I start a new decade. Oh my. Well, welcome to Surprise! Surprise! You, you young little lad. <laughs> What? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, just what? Put weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I know. That so. was like me. Whatever, whatever year it is ends in. Like for me, if it ends in a zero, my age ends in a f- five. Mm. So, yeah, I was born in eighty. That. Whatever it is, yeah. is always like spot on the decade. Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Always makes it easy to remember how old you are then. <laughs> I've got my old standby. <laughs> I've got my Moscow Mule in tow, so I'm good. And I'm <laughs> drinking. Um, it was going to be just a martini, but then I decided, no, I need something else in it. So I threw some club soda and the martini. There you go. <laughs> okay, sure. So, you know, it's a diluted, watered down martini. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> dirty, dirty or not dirty. Oh, it's no, not, not dirty. Not there dirty. weren't any olives up here. No. I was going to drink some Amarillo, which they used to make this drink at Sanaa called Painted Lemur, but it did not taste right, so it is going to the trash can. Cat Diet Coke? Always Diet Coke. You got, got over your addiction, Jewel. I will never get over my addiction. <laughs> yeah, but it's Diet Coke, so it's okay. <laughs> diet, diet, diet Coke or Coke Zero, if you had it. Ooh. Oh, Diet Coke, always. Diet Coke, really? Okay. Always. Yeah. I'm yeah. Coke Zero, dude. Only when I'm at a restaurant where I don't like the water. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Which is every restaurant in Florida. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how about Florida you? Florida water. Drinking? Yeah. Tony's got some beverage in a in a some kind of can there. Iced tea. Iced tea. Sweet. Oh yeah, unsweet. little right. sweet, right? No, unsweetened. Yep. Unsweetened. There you unsweetened go. Oh, with lemon. He put lemon yep. in there last time. Yep, yep. Very nice. Which I like. He's I like from, that. He's from Jersey. <laughs> Jersey. Nothing's wrong with Jersey. <laughs> I haven't been there, so I can't really comment either way. <laughs> Joel, what are you drinking? I'm drinking peach cream sparkling water. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good. Wow. I like it, sparkling water. It's okay. It, uh, I'm getting used to the, uh, you know, the zero calorie fake fen- phenylene and whatever it is. Mm. Oh, so it's a sweet. Because see, I don't like them when they sweeten them. Mm. I want mine with no sweet, just just the f- flavor of the fruit. Uh, right. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I, st- I still have my carbonation fix. So this mm-hmm. helps me get over every hump, you know, every hump in the day, literally, and not kill somebody. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, oh, like yeah. I said, drinking a Coke now is like, ugh, yeah. I can't handle it. But um, tequila and some sparkling water, I can handle that one too with a squeeze of lime. Ooh, so. I like that idea. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so today's discussion, as Bubba said, is our best and our worst dining experiences at either Disneyland or Walt Disney World. Mm. I found it very difficult to come up with like narrowing best down to one experience because I've had so many good experiences at different places and the worst wasn't an easy one because there was actually like two different places it could have been. But I don't know. Did anybody else find it difficult to do that? 
No. Yes. No. I couldn't find a worse. It's hard for me to find a worse right now. And I'm talking with Taylor about it, and we're just like, nothing that sticks out when, I mean, we're, I possibly might have one, but we just can't think of one. That was the hard one. Service uh, wise, no. world, I can help you get a worst experience. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. I'm I'm with you, Tony. One hundred percent. That was so easy to find the worst. And Pat, Actually, you were saying, you were saying, we were uh, one of my worst was with you guys. That's right. That's yes. right. And that that's on the list. Yeah. That's on the list, my friend. I'm trying to get comfortable. I cannot. It, get comfortable. It's repeatedly the worst on my list. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's that. It, the, it never that improves. Boring. It just disappoints time after time and that's a that's a shame but we'll get it is yeah we'll considering the other two places attached to it are, are fine yeah it, it's boggles the mind boggles I, mind i don't get it but anyway yeah, I don't, you were saying something cat oh no i think jewel was saying something oh jewel oh i was saying based service wise i haven't had anything but the taste of, of the food yes there I, i've been there gotcha Okay. Uh, I had a hard time picking one of the best ones, just like you, Chris. And I've had so many good experiences that yeah. the bad one is the clear bad one, but the good ones are yeah. very yeah. many and, and layered. I got you. So what do you think? Should we start with best or should we start with worst? I think we, we should, should start, start with worst and end on worst. a good note. End okay. on a good note? Oh, I yeah. was going to say good oh, news okay. or bad news. Exactly. <laughs> you want to end a, on a good note. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with Jewel. Mm. What is the okay. worst? The worst food I ever had was at Shutters at um, oh, yeah. the Caribbean Beach Resort. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I hear that it's permanently closed now or something. They shut yes. it down. Yes, it is gone and yep. a completely, like they redid that whole building Get completely. Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> it, was, it was what 10 years ago we flew in um six hours flight travel and you know rushing to oh I, we have reservations at shutters and i think the best the best thing that came out of that dinner was the cutest picture of my little girl eating the bread roll <laughs> <laughs> and that was like that 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 was it i mean that was the best experience of that meal was her, oh, oh, her oh. face with the bread roll but every, it had no flavor. It was sloppy. Um, it was like the, 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 they kind of forgot we were in the corner, you know, they were like trying to get out of there for the night or something or shut down. And it was just blah all the way around. Uh, Chase didn't like the food at all. It made him more sick. He thought the food would help him overcome from traveling all day long. And it was, it was, we're just like looking at each other. I'm like, and we wasted dining points on this. <laughs> oh no. Well, that's not yeah, so that was my worst. No bueno. Yeah, I, I went there twice, and that was enough. And both times, yeah, the food, I don't know why. It was just bland. Well, at least it's not there anymore. So, you know, rest in weakness, I guess. <laughs> I mean, there's better meals at, you know, Friendly's or Coco's. Or no doubt. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. we like go that. into Coco's when we're out in California. Yeah, we like Coco's. We like Friendly's. It's fine. Much better than having something you can't eat or that isn't edible, or the fact that you get forgotten about in a corner. Yeah. So nobody puts Al John in the corner. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> or gets in front of his fried chicken. Yeah, that's right. I can say. <laughs> so, Bubba, what was yours? My see, that's the thing. I. Don't really have a worse. We've had some bad servers. We had particularly one at Carnation Cafe to where it looked like he just did not want to be there at all. You know, yeah. you get those type of people or he's been working overtime or something like that, which we didn't know. You know, he would, we like talking with our servers and we've never had a bad experience when we're talking to servers we become friends with them you know so when we live down there you know next time we'll you know we'll be back next week you know we hope you're you know over here serving again and we'll see them again but it was just one time i didn't get his name it was at carnation and everything was like hey what do you guys want like what would you like you know he wouldn't you know greet us you know the proper greeting or you know i know sometimes carnation has specials going on and they would tell him he just wouldn't do anything and it was just 
We tipped them the basic 15% at the end of the day because our food was still amazing. We still got it on time and we just got refills, but it definitely, definitely somebody I wouldn't want serving us again just because he didn't have that Disney vibe. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't personable. He just, yeah. um, you know, so that's the only thing I could think of was just our server. Otherwise, food-wise, I've never had really a bad experience where we've eaten something bad or something tasted awful to where we took one bite and we're like, nope, we don't want this. I mean, food is amazing at Disney, especially yeah. at Disneyland. So it's, you know, that was a tough one to find, to figure out. Mm -hmm. oh, you can also, oh, what do you mean to say, Joel? I was saying you can also look at, well, you know what you're kind of going to get at quick service. You know what you're going to get at a sit-down service. You yeah. know what you're going to get with the reservation system. So, you know, it, it's not like you're going in there blindly and hopefully, you know, <laughs> you're hoping for the, you know, the best. Yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely would never get a burger at, um, and start uh, uh, Tomorrowland because they're dry. They've been sitting under the, oh, yeah. the heat forever. I go yeah. like the grill. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I get the breakfast. The breakfast is amazing at Galactic Grill. You know, I do not. I do not like their burgers, though. Yeah, that's true. Wait, if you order it gluten free, they make it fresh for you. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's <laughs> never gonna go happen. Tips and tricks from the master. I love it. Yeah, for for me, uh, I know that Tony's gonna hit on this, so I'm gonna avoid it because that that's a whole other ball of wax there. So I'll chime in when that happens. But I think Paradiso. I told you in advance that we had a very bad experience at Paradiso 37 over there at Disney Springs and Kristen's food came out raw. Like it, it, it oh. came out raw and we said, no, it was, I had fish. Oh, we had fish. And the inside okay. was raw and cold. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't even thought out. Yeah. And that so, happened to us even at uh, Tiffin's on opening night, Kristen. Oh, it that did, but you know what? When we commented on it, they fixed the problem instead yeah. of walking and go, Oh, let me go talk to the chef and come back. And the chef yeah. say, Oh, that fish is okay to eat raw. Yeah, and the best part was they comped it and wow. they get dessert. Oh, yeah. Well, the, 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 at this particular time, you know, we would like to try to go back to Paradiso 37, mm. but I feel that. I had been so tainted by that. I don't want to ever go there because the manager failed us. Uh, the server totally failed us and we're disrespectful. And when we wrote, uh, you wrote an email to them. I wrote three, three times trying to get somebody to respond to me and because of having a compromised immune system, eating something yeah. raw that should be cooked. I mean, that leads to food poisoning in a lot of people, but that can lead to ruining, really ruining my trip and putting me in the hospital, you know? Well, you, you go back and ask them, is that a sushi chef back there who's telling me I can eat this raw? Because if he's not a sushi chef, go yeah. go, <laughs> go get me a new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they have a new manager and, and a new uh, executive chef. Yeah. So oh, okay. I'd go give it another try. Okay, thank you, Tony. Yeah, I figure I figure that was the case because I know that you guys talk about it on your podcast um, before and had good experiences there. Yeah. So, uh, we may be we may be coerced, uh, twisting of the arm to go back there with you guys at some point. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, ho I'm I'm glad that at least uh, there are new people there that uh, are, are are more yes. responsive. So if you guys have good re re you know experiences, then I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll be. Yeah. There. Yeah. So that was my worst. And I will add this as a side note. We did have, and this is an infamous story on our old podcast, right? Um, we did have a time when we were at Animal Kingdom and someone decided to, it was over there in the food court area. And someone, when we were having our little takeout um, and eating there on, on the table, someone did actually decide, uh, mom decided to sit next to us in, uh, sit next to us. And the whole place was pretty much empty and sit next to us and change a poopy diaper right next to us. And I oh, took her and I said, three, three tables distance from her to the, walking to the to bathroom. The mm -hmm. And we even said something to her. Oh I'll John was like, excuse me, but can you please take your baby and change their poopy diaper in the restroom? It's right there. She's like, well, I'm by myself. Wow. No, I can't. Oh, and I'm like, okay, 
That's not just an issue of being disgusting. It's actually health. health. It's health a health, health code health. violation Huge. to have that on a table. Yep. Yep. And so. Oh, I know I, that. <laughs> right, Jewel. Of course, you with know my, that. With strollers, they would do it yeah. in my strollers, and I'd see it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, no extra bueno. cleaning fee when when it comes back to me. Yep. No bueno. Yeah. So anyway, that, simple, that green that thing. simple green that thing. <laughs> well, people, people Wait. are entitled. I think you know, I, you know, we've talked about it on our show in the past. I know that you know Tony's talked about it on Disney Parks podcast. But people are entitled, and they just yeah. lose their brain when they're on vacation. And I hate that. Vacation brain. Vacation brain or entitlement brain. In this case, yep. it was definitely entitlement brain, right. um, for sure. But I'm anyway. glad I choose to still use my brain when I go on vacation. Right. All well, right. You don't have to. Nobody else is. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Well, we talked about my experience at Paradiso, but Kat, I know you're next on on the dock here. Okay. So I told Kristen a little bit about this on our show about gluten free stuff about how we all got food poisoning at Morimoto, oh. but I was talking to my mother. I think I told Bubba the story this already. But for D23 last year, mom came out to visit. Oh, oh, yeah. And before we went to the convention, she and I did a couple of park days because we're insane, obviously. <laughs> and um, I was, am no longer, a big fan of the Cove Bar. I loved Cove Bar when it was a thing. Um, they had great drinks and their food was usually really good. So I told mom that they'd updated it to Lamplight Lounge and she wanted to check it out. So we went over there to California Adventure to have some lunch. So we ordered our drinks and we ordered some food. Obviously, Lamplight Lounge, you have to order the lobster nachos. You got to mm -hmm. get them. You got to get them. So we're drinking our drinks. We're enjoying the nice weather. You know, my mom lives out of state. So we were you know, catching up and talking about family stuff in this waitress who'd been very lovely to us before this set the plate of food down in front of us and walked away and we both went to dig into it and on top of a plate of lobster nachos is a full-on human hair oh i've had hair served me in food before i'm not like a huge picky person so we flagged the waitress down and we said um excuse me there's a hair in this in this plate of food, um, it would it be possible, you know, to get a new? She looked at me, and she said, "Well, where is it?" And I said, "It's sure. it's right there, that <laughs> black hair, on the plate of food." Oh, well, sometimes lobsters come like that. <laughs> a hairy? Ever seen a and hairy lobster I, before? I could not help myself because I'm me. And I said, they come like what, with the toupee? No, they don't. Wow. <laughs> and my mom is much calmer than me. She was like, okay, no, we're done here. You can take the food away. We don't want these drinks anymore. We're, we're finished, we're done. And the girl was like, okay, all right. And she walks away my mother goes, did she just call us stupid? Because like, I feel like if you look at someone straight dead in the face and tell them that lobsters have luxurious mustaches, like, you Some think do. I'm dumb enough to believe you. <laughs> I haven't gone back. I haven't eaten there again. But uh, my friend had his niece in town. Uh oh. And we went, and I was sitting with them at the table. They ordered the lobster nachos. It comes out with a hair on it. Wow. And I was like, no, I'm done now. I'm I'm done. No, I will never I will never do this again. Somebody uh, because, because on the line not wearing a hat. Not wearing a hat or a hairnet or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. just the fact that they were like, Oh yeah, lobsters come like that. Yet there is a lobster, lobster distributor has some very hairy lobsters. <laughs> Seriously, and lobsters, there is such thing as a hairy lobster, but it's a deep sea lobster. You don't eat them. They live in heated underwater vents. They're like this big. Like, come on, lobsters come like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, this lobster had an afro and um, a pair of disco roller skates, and I wasn't into it. And apparently it had a cousin that was just like them, right? 
seriously. I like it must, it's, it's hereditary. But the <laughs> lobster, hairy lobsters have notoriously ethnic hairy backs like my uncles do in Italy. Was an Afro lobster. Well, that lobster needs to manscape and get that lawnmower trim. <laughs> yeah. right? Wow. It's a new B fifty two song. I, I was right? gonna say the rock Harry lobster. lobster. I almost, oh I almost queued that up. <laughs> <laughs> almost queued that up. Almost. Uh, lobster. Oh, he's Jamaican lobster with his beanie. Jamaican right? crazy. Now, whenever mom and I have a bad experience somewhere, we just send each other the gif of the dancing lobsters from the Amanda uh, Vine show. Send in the dancing lobsters. Amazing. Every time. <laughs> oh, wow. no. Well, that, oh is not, that is not happiness, and that is yeah. not good customer service. I mean, I'd be, I would be appalled. Oh, yeah. yeah it was, that's uh, disgusting. It was just, gross. You're supposed Thank to God. just immediately remove it and get another one made. Yeah. Yeah. Don't question me. Fly. Just take it Bye. away. Right be done with it like if she had said oh my gosh i'm so sorry i probably would have been like dude whatever it's cool no big deal but because she was it comes out what no 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 just, comes just, with just hair. i'm sorry can i get you anything else yeah. mm -mm. your your uh tip exactly. your tip comes to zero thank yeah. you <laughs> it just comes that way sorry yeah. it just comes that way to zero <laughs> would you like a shaggy steak with that right. oh perfect right. <laughs> served in a dirty ashtray in a dirty <laughs> ashtray <laughs> right. A greasy pork. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, Chet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Where do we go now? I think we're done with it. No, no, no. We can't even get to the best. We can't what even can top Harry Lobster? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're down to Tony. Yeah. Oh, and oh, I yeah. think, I right, think so I Tony and I may have the same place. So I'm going to let yeah, Tony go yeah. first. So I have uh, two. One is horrible food, and one is a horrible experience. Uh, so the horrible food is uh, Maria and Enzo's. Six times. Went there six, six times. times. Wow. And they failed every single time. Wow. And the last time with you guys, there were six of us. We all ordered the same thing, spaghetti and meatballs. Yes. No, sauce, no taste, no flavor, and ice cold. And that, it, it's impossible to make pasta gold unless it's been sitting out for days. Uh, so I've gone there numerous times, like I said, six, and I've had horrible food. The service is okay, not the best, but it's always been the food that is always tastes like crap. Uh, and recently, uh, well, just before the pandemic, um, I went to uh, Allen Compass. And we had the worst service I've ever had. Un <laughs> Believable. Yeah, brand new restaurant. I don't <laughs> think the woman really wanted to work that day who was serving. Yeah, you probably got the same person I did. <laughs> yeah. We, That's well, at the Yacht Club, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we, we yeah. sat down. Uh, we added a couple extra people. It was supposed to be four. It turned out to be six. I don't think she was digging that. Uh, so we pulled over, like, uh, we pulled another table and chairs and put it all together uh, with the help of the server, uh, the, the hostess that did that. And uh, we ordered and never saw the server again. Oh, my. So the food runners brought the food out. And uh, we said to the food runner, well, can we get, you know, ketchup? And uh, I think somebody wanted hot sauce. And uh, we needed a couple refill on sodas. And never saw the server the entire meal. So she comes at the end. Uh, I had ordered uh, uh, fish and chips, which the fish and chips were very, I, not so much the chips, but the fish was way over salted. It was very salty. Mm. Oh, no. So literally, it's only half a piece. She's like, why didn't you eat this? And I, first of all, I was asking myself, why is she asking me why I didn't eat this? Like, what did she care? <laughs> yeah, Maybe that's all I felt like eating. Interesting anyway, question. Play club. Uh, what if you should yeah. have, you should have asked it differently? Like, I'm sorry, sir. Did you? Is there something wrong with the food? Or you should have asked, would you like it to go? Do you right. like? Right. Would you like it to go plate or right. something? Right. That's exactly usually right. what you ask. So I said to her, well, I didn't need it because it was extremely salty. And then I said, had you come back and asked us, I would have told you that, and you would have been able to fix the problem. But now. It's over. It's done. So she just grabs the plates. She leaves and then comes back and drops the check on the table. 
Doesn't oh. ask us if we want dessert. Doesn't ask us if we had a, had, you know, was everything okay? Nothing. Just drops the check and walks away. And I was reluctant to, like, just go find a manager. I, I said, you know what? I'm not. So I wrote a letter. And I got back just the standard formatted copy and paste response from guest relations. Oh, sorry, you had a bad experience. Oh, well, bring that to the manager, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. X-Files. X-Files, right, exactly. Shredder. Yep. They're probably going, oh, great, it's Castle Nova with another complaint. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a file cabinet. Put it in the Tony those, file, yeah. right? Put it in the Tony somebody file. somebody put this in his file, please? In Tony file. The Castle Nova file is like... Which yeah. file is that? That thick one over there in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> is it the complaint or suggestion pile? Which one does it go in? Like, yeah, put it back in the corner with the... Yeah. Put it back in the corner with the rest of those yeah. guys you don't, yeah. that, that don't get served. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So uh, those are my uh, two uh, bad experiences. Mm. Well, I'm going to go with a, a, by one would be a place that no longer exists. And it's, it's the old Wolfgang Puck that was on West Side. Mm. Now, this was not when Wolfgang Puck owned it because when he got divorced, he lost the restaurant to his wife in their yeah. settlement. Mm. And the restaurant went from being amazing to being awful. Right, right. And one of the issues uh -huh. we had wasn't just that the food was just wasn't up to par when we were there, but we actually had, they seated us by a large party that was sitting at two different tables and the one woman was yelling across to the other people and she was constantly yelling so loud and talking so loud. And we kept asking, you know, is there any way we could get like, seed somewhere else or something can be done because we can't even talk to each other because we can't hear each other over her and they complained to the manager on the way out and nobody was nobody cared they're like oh okay mm. uh, it was like oh okay i see where this is gone so i was really glad when they closed that and he decided to open his own restaurant My. again because that place it's good. We yeah. don't have any issues there. But, yeah, that was, you know, the lack of concern for the fact that you have a woman who is talking at, like, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10 at 11. Right. Mm. And that you can hear her at the very front of the restaurant talking. Wow. And you're not doing anything about it. Was I there? You were there. It was you and I. Mm. It must have been so bad I blocked out that memory. Or well, you couldn't hear yourself think. No, this is true, Tony. 100%. Of places that are currently there, I have to go with, yeah, Maria at Enzo's. The, yeah. I was so disappointed in that because knowing that it was an Italian-run mm -hmm. business, yeah. I had really high hopes for it because I just know from having traveled to Italy and in dining at restaurants in the U.S. that are Italian-owned, they always have fantastic, flavorful Italian food. Yeah. And the pasta is always top, top-notch. And it wasn't. And like you said, the meatballs, had, it, nothing had flavor. Nothing. It was, you know it was bland. I remember, yeah. saying, I remember saying to all of us at the table, Tony, you'll remember this, I said, we all ordered spaghetti and meatballs. How are you going to screw this up? Yeah. Oh, they did. <laughs> but they did. Yeah. And the fact that they share a kitchen with the pizza place where the food is fine and the Edison, which is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baffles my mind that crappy food can come out of that same kitchen. It, it, it must be two separate parts of a shared kitchen. Like there's the Italian chef and the Edison chef and they don't, don't talk to each other. You know. Or it comes but, out piping hot and someone was not manning the, you know, expediting. The food, right? But yeah. it wasn't yeah. even that because we also had noticed that some of the dishes were, you know, lukewarm, where some were actually cold, cold. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. needed and, to be. And we were also there at the end of the night. There weren't that many tables. It wasn't like we were at the height of rush hour. No. Well, when they put those, when they when they put food out, getting ready to serve it, when the expediter comes and gets it, they should put it in a in the in the pass, which should have that that heat lamp at least on it, right? I would yeah. think you would hope. 
You would hope. You would hope, but clearly not. Yeah. Unless you said it was the end of the night and they turned it off accidentally or something. I don't know. But it well, was did they do that had a reservation. Every, but but yeah. but in Tony's case, he's been there six, six times. Time. Are you going to screw it up? Towards the end of the night? No, no. Sometimes early, like 5 o'clock. I've been there 5 o'clock, 6 I mean, it's still no 7 o'clock, yeah. still tasteless food. Horrible. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's horrible. And I chicken like parm. I mean, how do you screw up chicken parm? It's just chicken with breading on it. It's the sauce, I think, that has no flavor. I mean, yeah. the breading yeah. doesn't either, but the sauce doesn't. Maybe it's their sauce that's horrible. Yeah. The hideaway is a cool-looking place. We've yeah. And the food is great there. Yeah, the, the food, food at the hideaway is pretty good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The charcuterie is fantastic there. That's yeah, the yeah. The pajuta and um, what's it out. I'm hungry now. Okay, so I think it's time to move on to what everybody is excited to talk about, and that is the best place they've ever dined at Disney. So, Kat, you want to start it off this time? Sure, yeah. Um, I've had so many wonderful experiences dining at Disney. Um, I love to go to the... Um, Brown Derby Lounge and have salad there with Orlando, the bartender, and Danielle, and talk to her about her daughter. I love those those wonderful experiences. But I have a story that took place a couple years ago, probably more than a couple years ago. But it will always stand out in my mind because it was someone went so far out of their way to make my experience good that I tell the story to everyone. Um, I used to be vegan before I got sick. And I had done as much research as I possibly could to be able to have a normal experience at Disney World. It was my birthday. I was like really excited to be there with my family. And um, I was online and all I could read was about this chef named Chef TJ. Um, I'm not sure if he's with the company anymore, but he was a chef who went out of his way to make sure that people with dining allergies at the time, because it wasn't as popular as it is now, um, had good experiences and he was um, the chef at the Grand Floridian Cafe so we made a reservation and we went and I sat down at the reservation and I asked to speak to the chef and it wasn't chef TJ so I was like oh okay well I'll just order something off the menu and I was I was pretty upset because I'd like really had my heart set on having a meal and being able to speak to him and enjoying myself and all they had on the menu at the time that I could eat was like a garden salad. So I was like, okay, I'll just order the salad and it'll be fine. And I ordered the salad and I was pretty upset and the waitress could tell that I was upset. And she was like, is something wrong? And I was like, well, I was really hoping to speak to Chef TJ because I'm vegan and I, you know, it's my birthday. And I was really hoping to have something that would be like more, you know, special than like a salad with some vinaigrette on it, which is basically just like a pile of lettuce. And she was like, oh, Chef TJ's at 1900 next door now. And, you know, uh, I don't even know if he's here today. And I was like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's all good. And, you know, my mom, she was like worked up. And my dad was worked up because whenever oh. she gets worked up, he gets worked up. Everybody gets worked up. So I'm sitting there like trying to be positive and um, out comes Chef TJ. Oh. And he came over to the table and he brought me a basket of vegan cookies and sweets and like a big <gasps> fruit plate. And he was like, I'm so sorry. Normally I'm here, but I'm over at the other restaurant now. And I just wanted to come out and make sure you were okay. And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, like getting teary eyed. Cause like, I didn't expect him to like come all the way over for no reason. And he was like, I brought you this and this and this. And he was like, do you want anything else? I will, I will go back there and make sure they can make you whatever you want. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm, this is too much. Uh, uh. And <laughs> it was just so wonderful that he like, they told him that I was there looking and expecting to be served by him. And they, he like went out of his way to like put a thing together for me. It had like candy and fruit and cookies, all sorts of stuff. And I was like completely overwhelmed because this man, he didn't know me, obviously. And he like gave me his business card and he was like, whenever you're back in, L in Orlando, just send me an email and I'll tell you where I'm cooking and, and you know, whatever. And I was like, oh my God, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it will always stand out in my mind because like, I was just like a 22 year old girl, like with her family, I, he didn't know me from Eve or whatever. And he like went out of his way to make sure that it come out that I was having a nice time and my birthday wasn't a huge flop, you know? 
and yeah. it was so wonderful and I just cherish that memory so much and you know nothing is ever that's why I have such high standards for Disney dining you know like I've always had a great experience but that experience like put it over the top that's an awesome story <clears throat> yeah it was great oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. that yeah. That's what and I think wants. that's I think that is the thing that makes Disney different from most companies is that and not everybody's that way of course I mean it, you couldn't I mean there's not enough people in the world that are there to that really somebody having a good day means that much to them to yeah. go out and do the go that extra mile but you know we have found that not relating to food, but we have found that at Coronado Springs with the cast members over there of going more than that extra mile out of their way just to get to know you and make sure you're having a great time. And, and because of that, you, we go by occasionally to look for those cast members, you know, yeah. because we want them to know that 10 years later, you still made we i want you to know you still made an impact you what you did on that particular trip meant that much yeah. you know it's great to have people that are like that that work for disney so that's a really cool story that started bad and like turned out to be awesome Definitely. okay so out john i'll let you go and where do i start i think I think one of the things about our experiences at Disney, much like you, Kat, is then this is what makes us go back time and time again um, is over at the Waldorf Astoria. So when we go to Bull and Bear, um, we have a Tim. Maze, a Tim. <laughs> Tim is the maitre d'. He's no. Like, oh, well, go He's ahead. A server. He's a server. He's the head, one of the yeah, head servers, yes, if not is. the head server, yeah. right? So he's the best. He's also um, uh, kind of like a great, I don't know, is he a junior sommelier, I, you know? He's right? a sommelier. He's sommelier. Okay. So like he's, you know, the full bird colonel there. So he's like serving us the best, having the best experience there. Great pairings, awesome stuff. The chef comes out amazing. But every time we're there, we look up Tim. Tim's the man. He's still there today. And I can't wait to go back because he makes uh, our anniversary dinners. We make it a point when we do go to, to have our anniversary dinner there. And then um, everything is just wonderful. So great table side service. No matter what we order, it's always impeccable and served with a smile. And then we talk about the replacements. And then we talk about whatever cool rock band we want to talk about, you know, which is awesome because he also plays guitar and uh He's just an amazing guy, and uh, we f we follow him on Facebook, and he's just always talking about cool stuff. So, so next time we go, yep. which will be next year, mm -hmm. Tony, you have to go with us because you yeah. haven't been there. No, he's got a break from the norm. You have know, you? We, have to, we you went know. there, uh, uh, James, Susan, and I for last year. Not uh, magical dining, I think it was. Hmm. Yeah. Bull and Bear. Hope hopefully it was yeah. for you. Yeah. Oh God, yes. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> we like good. to we like to go. And it was funny. We did ask for Tim, but he was off. Ah. Uh, uh, so. Well, you he know, picked the wrong day. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and and I could go on. You know, there's so many great experiences we we've, we've had at Sanaa, uh, mm. at Yak and Yeti for a more accessible dinner. Uh, right. Boma, we've had great experiences there, and Tony, of course, everywhere. Uh, where there's Italian food and like the best Italian food with Chef Fabrizio, of course, we're going to talk about uh, sure. over there. Um, but man, you know, what's not to like about Waldorf Astoria? What's not to like about the Four Seasons? You know, yeah. with, and, you know, it's funny. We were just at uh, La Luce uh, for Magical Dining. Mm -hmm. And when we left, we were like, what happened? It was, oh, no. it was just okay. It wasn't like you know, mind blowing Italian. Like I've come to know over there. I'm like, are they, are they working back there? It's like, what are I they know. cooking? They got the B squad up there. Apparently. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so I was, I, I don't know. I just think that the, maybe the ingredients they could or could not get, mm. um, you know, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm like, all right, you know, everybody gets an off, time, off, off chance. That's, 
that's their one shot. <laughs> that was this this year? Yeah, this year, recently. Yeah, like uh, not last week, but the week before we Oof. were there. Man. I wonder if everything just worldwide going on has maybe impacted the ingredients they're getting. And- I think so. I think so. From what I've heard from uh, Fabrizio and the uh, two other chefs over there, even at uh, Ravello that I talked to, uh, is yes, they're having a – like we're – Four Seasons is trying to source everything from one distributor. Yeah. Because they don't want multiple trucks coming with multiple cross Yeah. 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 Yep. Makes so sense. they're trying to source everything that's on the menu from one distributor. So I think that is having an impact on some of the restaurants. And even like the manager over Wolfgang was saying the same thing. Yes. They are having a tough time sourcing ingredients because the distributors just aren't stockpiling like they would have. If there wasn't a pandemic, because there's just not enough restaurants buying. It's not enough. It's yeah. Not enough. And not only that, deliveries are running late, especially here in yeah. California because of the fires. Mm, a yeah. lot of places are out of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. Global, global disruption of supply chain. Yeah. yeah. And it was funny because one of the things that we were going to order at La Luce on the Magical Dining menu, they did not have. Oh. So, oh, yes, yeah. ingredients were out. So. Hold yeah. 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 I want to next year. Because we always do food and wine weekends where they mm. have the multi courses and we yeah. do add the wine pairing and right. yeah. So yeah. and Bubba, that's what we're gonna do when uh, you <laughs> finally make that trip out to Orlando and and yeah. and, and visit the other park. <laughs> yeah. I'm tagging along on that trip. I'm inviting yeah. myself. Hey, we should all we should all go together, Jewel. We got to break you away for a minute. We got to break you. I was going to tell Bubba I'm in a suitcase. Ah, <laughs> okay. Sorry, make sure these I'm are my jewels right here. These are my <laughs> jewels in my briefcase. <laughs> What's in the other bag? My cat. <laughs> got my jewels in one bag. I got my cat in the other. I'm not even. Yeah. Wow. I was going to try to circle it to another joke early in the podcast. I'm not. Gonna... Don't do it. I will refrain. Next up. Uh, let's see. Jewel. Uh, well, I was gonna, I was gonna leave it for you. Might want to unzip the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to leave you for last, Jewel? Unzip it. We can leave you for last. We'll go with Bubba then. Go with Bubba. Go to top Bubba. Oh, mine's not. I mean, it's it's special, of course. Um, we. Our first time ever going to Blue Bayou. You know, mm. we have been longtime Disney people. It's just we have never, ever made it out to Blue Bayou until my wife's birthday uh, years ago and uh, finally made a reservation. We dined there and everything was amazing. You know, they always ask you when you make your reservation, are you celebrating anything? Or, you, you know, something. And yeah, we're like, it's my wife's birthday and this is our first time ever dining here so you know we wanted to be real special and they made it phenomenal you know they had something on the table wishing her a happy birthday when we got there um the food of course was just amazing our server was uh she was phenomenal just making sure we are very attentive and um it's just so happens at the end of the night uh you know things are starting to wind down we're done with our food and the table next to us they're cleared out and they're leaving so the buster starts busting their food or getting the stuff off the table and as he's picking up the tray he sort of swings and starts walking as he swung with the tray a ranch bowl fell down hit the ground and went all over my wife oh no yes ah uh, so and you know we could, I, it was you know serious moment but you couldn't help but laugh you know it was you know it was a true accident and you know just the splatter of french all over her pant leg her back and you know they were on it like that they somebody came out with towels a manager came out asked if everything was okay if there's something we could do for you so they of course they comped our uh, our dessert that we didn't want a dessert, but they still brought us out a dessert and they comped it. And then not only that, they gave her like this little Disney voucher to where she can get a shirt and some pants at any Disney store. Oh, wow. nice. So, and she could cash it in at any time, which was phenomenal. You know, that, so it was, you know, a, a funny night to how you end the dining experience, which is yeah. everything going right. One thing goes wrong, but then after, Bill keeps going 
higher and higher that Disney expectation that everybody receives there. So Love and it. a new outfit. And yeah, a new outfit. outfit, of course. New shirt, <laughs> new leggings, oh, new ass. <laughs> so that was it was a good birthday and just um, you know, we've been back there before and still have had, you know, great experience with the food. I always get the surf and turf. That's my mm. favorite meal there. Mm. And uh, you know, the smell of the pirate water and everything right there is just amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So for me, since we're saving Jewel for last, uh, I've got, <laughs> like I said earlier, very difficult to try and decide a place. And Sanaa, it's one of my favorite places because it's consistent. The food is good. We always get great service. And then you have places like Ravello that is always spot on with the food. Um, nothing ever you know, nothing ever goes wrong. It, best limoncello anywhere in the world. Mm. Right? I said in the world. I don't mean Disney World. No. I mean in the whole world. Like better than what I've even had in Italy. Better than what but I've had in Italy. Fabrizio is Italian. So, I mean, you're getting yeah. this homemade recipe. So what yeah. can be better than that? And there, he has a variety of limoncellos too. Oh, yeah. So cool. By the way, limoncello was my celebrity, celebratory drink on our, our way back from the USO tour after 9-11. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You have to ask for the secret stash because there's only the regular on the menu. But you have to ask the server what's on the secret stash. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. But I will say I have never had anywhere at Four Seasons a meal that was not phenomenal to any of the restaurants, whether it be PB and G, mm-hmm. Plancha, mm-hmm. Kappa. I mean that yeah. they they go all out. But and I'm not even going to say I'm not even going with Victoria and Alberts. Mm. Yeah, Victoria and Alberts was good, said, by the way. It, it was is. excellent. Great service. It is. I have to go with Bowl and Bear oh, when man. they do their food and wine weekends, which we have gone to. The only years we've missed it is, of course, we're missing it this year because I am am not approved to travel yet. Um, but we also missed it due to Hurricane Irma. Um, we were scheduled that weekend and right. got a call wow. from the hotel suggesting that we cancel our reservation and that they weren't going to be doing any of that stuff because it was going to get that bad. Yeah, heartbroken. But it's So our- instead of going that year... And that day, we drove home, took over 24 hours <laughs> to yep. get 700 miles back home. <laughs> but Bull and Bear, when they do that that menu, I mean, and we always, I always request him long in advance. Like, I call and make sure that, like, he's going to be working that day and, and all of that so that he's <clears throat> the one that's waiting on us because he has always made that experience one of the best i mean it is fine dining and you don't have to go in there wearing a cocktail dress and a dinner jacket like you do over victoria and albert this is true tony can go in his t-shirt and shorts and be completely comfortable at least at least his polo get... shirt and shorts all right give him some standards do what at least he could wear his polo shirt with a collar <laughs> that's right yeah, get some standards. You know, upgrade, Tony. It's this shirt with the collar on it. That's right. Yeah. The, 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 the shirt, you know? Caps on. The golf shirt. The yeah. golf shirt. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. every time we've been there, whatever we've done the wine pairing, we get a little, oh, here, there's a little bit left in this bottle. Let me show this one to you, too. Right. So it's it's expensive, not expensive like Victorian Albert's expensive, but I mean it's Disney along the lines of, you know, any other high end restaurants you're gonna go to, signature dining at yep. Walt Disney World. Yeah. It's up there with that same kind of price tag. But it food's always good. I mean, everything is just amazing there. So uh yeah, I have to go with that. Right? Like oh wait. Sorry. There we go. I had to put all the screen's up. Okay. So I've been to many you know, Disney World for 10 years straight when I lived on the East Coast, and I always loved Narcoosies for uh, the East Coast. I've uh, mm-hmm. been to many, you know, you know, Coral Reef, uh, Brown Derby. Uh, being here in Disneyland, um, 
I go to tea time with my daughter at Steakhouse 55 when we can. Celebrated birthdays at Steakhouse 55 for the hubby. Uh, Blue Bayou have, have had great experiences there. But the one thing that I, you know, like I said, I was leaving it to top everybody. I'm 47 and I've spent every year from 40 at Club 33. <laughs> and the one experience I had, which totally, I didn't expect that what, whatsoever because, you know, everybody's so personable in, in the club. And when, when you're there often, they get to know you and you get to know them. So I got my birthday card Aww. for everybody. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. But what's even better is when Happy Birthday Jewel is on your own menu in the yes for, oh, yeah. for the hour that you're there everybody sees it and they all sing and you know come in. That's so funny. but even though that you know that's a great experience um almost every restaurant that's in disneyland i can go outside i can go to morton's for a great steak you know, we can go to Ruth Chris for, for a great steak over uh, Steakhouse 55. Uh, Italian, well, there's Buca di Beppo, and there's a lot of hole in the walls around here that have great Italian food. But I like 33 because the menu changes every quarter for the most part, and they do change chefs. The chefs come from Napa Rose, they go to Steakhouse 55, Carthay Circle, and... Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're courses, and you can have the wine pairing with them. That's suggested by the sommelier. Um, but it's basically, it's not as touristy. You know, you're not getting bumped in by somebody trying to get to their table. You're not having so many children running around or screaming and stuff like that. There's the ambience of it. And having, you know, this balcony atmosphere and you know, hearing all the people, all the peasants down below, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the little people as they wait for as they wait for Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> exactly, and you wait. I've got to, my right? wine, and you don't. <laughs> exactly. Boy, right, they're right there. Uh, but no, I mean, I can I can play the piano in the lounge if I want to, because they know me. I don't. I you know, what am I going to do? Play chopsticks? But um, <laughs> you know, it's just. It's, it's a, the air conditioning is awesome. <laughs> okay. But, you know, the meals are just phenomenal. And, and sometimes, you, you know, I do get full from having these small portions and things like that. And, you know, they know I'm allergic to nuts already for the most part. I, I can't handle peanuts or a lot of tree nuts. And I'm like, Jewel, we got you. We know you. And the, the chef will come up with something for me uh, when I'm there. And, you know, I'm not rushed out of that restaurant or that, you know, the club. Uh, there's been many times my girlfriends and I have closed the club down, you know. <laughs> Love <laughs> that feeling. Mm. And um, the only one bad experience I had there, even though it was still awesome, the fire alarm went off and we all had to evacuate. And I'm like, oh, no, I've I'm taking my there. drink with me. <laughs> I've been there when the fire alarm went off around there before, and it's a loud fire alarm, by the way. It is <laughs> just the worst sounding thing you could hear. It happened like almost during Phantasmic. Oh, geez. Yeah. What yeah. a horrible and time. It may have, was it during the Halloween uh, bash? Because that's when it went off on us. And, you know, we're. You, you might have been there the night I was there. Then no, I even have it recorded. Okay, yeah. Like, this is the worst sounding thing you have ever heard. I'm going to have to find that video and show it to you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you and you would see the typical, like, people who are entitled, me being one of them, drink. Oh, what what's going on? Oh, should we we got to leave the building. Can I take my drink? <laughs> I'm taking my drink. And, um, and then because we were freezing, um, and th there was no call for them, us to go back up stairs and, and uh, resume activities. We decided to go trick or treat <laughs> without, without the band. And then 
they finally caught up with us. <laughs> so we had to exit, oh. you know, because we didn't have the, uh, the arm band. But, well, <laughs> oh. hopefully you finished the meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some, something we shouldn't have done. But yeah, no, um, like I said, 33 is, is a great experience. I want to I wanna be able to invite all you guys if I can, you know, one time here or another. Um, it's just, uh, you know, with COVID and gosh, who knows what's, you know, what, what the changes are going to be with it with that restaurant and uh, the atmosphere and everybody in the club. But um, yeah. now that that's, I mean, like I said, every, everybody, every other restaurant I've been to great, but uh, the one restaurant that I go back to, even though they don't have a sit, you know, a, a sit down service, I got to go to Plaza Inn and get my chicken. <laughs> and Double mashed potato. And the mashed potatoes. So, <laughs> and that, those are two different parts of the spectrum, I know. 100%, though. I mean, I, I was just telling Kristen before the show, Jewel, because we 100%, I said, the plaza, right? The best chicken ever? Yes. Oh, yeah. And I even yeah. said it. I even said it on your show, even last time I said, you know, this is going to be blasphemous because we live in the South, but the best chicken I've ever had? The plaza. Yes. No. So, I was surprised nobody mentioned Napa Rose. I was going to give it a <clears throat> honorable mention. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I 100%. Did. I, I said, yeah, Napa Rose was good, but it, yeah. the, I, I didn't have yeah. the experience between Steakhouse 55 and 33 mm -hmm. or the Bayou at Napa Rose. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't on my top five. Right. We had a great love at Napa Rose. At, so, uh, we had a phenomenal experience at Napa Rose. A, a not good experience at Blue Bayou, and we haven't done Steakhouse 55. So, oh, Jewel, next time good. we're out in California, we need to do, we're going to have to do that for a meal. Oh, we just got yeah. So, Jewel, is the new Club 33 <laughs> better improvement over the old 33? Yes, I've been uh, both times, uh, before mm. refurbishment and after. And mm. I wasn't a and when I went there, I was celebrating my 40th. I'm like, wow, this is awesome, great. I'm at 33, hey. And um, I realized this is a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, the really? This is, and, and I'm like, oh man, and I'm spending how much money for that? But you know, once again, I'm thinking I'm in there for the experience. I'm there because yeah. not everybody else can go. Yeah. And I'm taking everything in because, you know, once again, not everybody can go. But yeah. when they changed up everything and um, I, I'm the type of person to take in their, their, their environment very quickly and have it imprinted in my head because I had to wear glasses at such an early age. I actually remembered certain parts of what was what. I'm like, wasn't that a fireplace there? And wasn't that a... Uh -huh. And they said, wow, you know, how how do you remember that? But yeah. Um, it was it was it the changes are great from you know my previous yeah. experience to now i'm just uh, uh, i was great. sad that they removed the elevator i mean that was the one thing that you know they went they sent imagineers to france to you know take pictures and make it an exact duplicate and then they turned it into a booth which i was like what i'll tell you the one good thing about the about that elevator at least unlike one that i was in in france mm -hmm. It didn't ever get stuck yeah. for over yeah. an hour. Right. And it was bigger than the ones in France. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. No, I, I, got, I, I got lucky. I, I was able to do Club 33 twice in one trip. Uh, we did it oh once with our Adventure by Disney. They, uh, that was the treat for breakfast. And it wasn't a buffet. Uh, they actually gave us a regular sit-down breakfast. Um, and then uh, I was with Rick. And then we went again for dinner on a different night. So, yeah. We do like. And, and you see the atmospheres change from breakfast to lunch to dinner. Yeah. So they, they yeah. change their table settings. They, they right. uh, even change their jackets. Yeah. The servers. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One day we'll a little bit back. more formal. Yeah. Yes. And you still can wear shorts and yeah. not flip flops. You can wear sandals. But right. yeah, I can go in there with a you know t-shirt, ears, and, yeah. and shorts, and still have the a only meal. time I ever wore pants into a Disney park was to go to Club Thirty Three. <laughs> <laughs> ever, All ever, 
The, the only, only time, time we, know the, we, know, we, know the we know the trick now. We'll just tell Tony, hey, we're going to Club 33. Then we'll and not even on. jeans. I had pants pants on, dress pants. <laughs> Pants pants. 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 Pants I think we covered everything today. Man, what didn't we cover? <laughs> <laughs> Epic show. I wrote, uh, let me tell you about my California grill. Um, I started going there. Uh, it was a, when I was a cast member, they gave us a coupon for uh, during the holidays. They gave us these coupons for lunch at different restaurants. So we went there for lunch, and that was the first time I was ever there. This was back in the day when they used to be open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and then I went every single year thereafter and kind of where, uh, Jew was talking about where they used to print your name on the menu. Well, they uh -huh. used to do that at California grill. If you would come back, we say, welcome back, Mr. Castleover. Yes. And I used to get a menu like that. And they also used to, uh, if, if you brought people, they would give you a, like a piece of cake and Hey, thank you for bringing. So. I was there so many times they were not bringing cake and they were bringing not a slice, but a whole damn cake <laughs> to the table. Like, Oh, thank you for bringing these people. And I got really friendly with the manager there, Gary. And one time for work, I brought uh, 16 other people. There were 17 of us. And we drank 22 bottles of wine, 17 people, 22 bottles of wine. And oh, love the, you. the cork fee oh my lord we were the last people there there was not another soul in the restaurant this was we left like one hour past the restaurant closed nobody ever came over and said time to get the hell out nobody said anything they kept bringing wine they kept bringing uh, water whatever so uh on my way out <clears throat> Uh, I had said to Gary, the manager, I said, you know, thanks for letting us stay. You know, I know you guys all want to go home. And he's like, listen, next time you come, he goes, we're going to give you the private room and it's on us. I'm like, fantastic. But we never went back. I was like, Damn. okay, so do you still have that contact? Because we, we're, so, we're all going. We're all well, going. <laughs> it's funny. Well, Gary doesn't work there anymore. He went to, um, uh, he's now at the uh, Artist Point. And it was funny when he went over there. I said to him, I said, Gary, I said, why are you working here? I said, you were at the busiest, most popular restaurant on property. He's like, exactly. That's why I wanted to get the hell out of there. I wanted something it was busy. quiet. <laughs> I needed a break. Oh, so, yeah. so then when they turned it to a character meal, I, I had gone back and I said, Gary, it's not so quiet and, and peaceful here anymore, is it? He's like, yeah, they found out that it was nice and quiet over here and they put, turned it into a character meal. So... I'll now tell he, you though what what shooter. Chef Christine did over there with that menu is awesome. It's yeah. really really good. I just don't I really like the it. share components, and because I asked one time, we we got the like the appetizer. I said, "Can we get more of the shrimp?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, what do you mean no? <laughs> the shared component. What if I want more? <laughs> you know, they're like, "No." That's you get that, and that's that. So I was like, oh, no, whatever. Jules laughing. She's like, shared components. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a shared appetizer and a shared dessert, which I, I don't know. I don't like sharing desserts. Nope, nope. It's all mine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is why I love this podcast so much. We don't care? No, yeah. no. Well, I mean, look at the, I mean, this, this chat. Wow. Super yeah. epic. Yeah. And one you last uh, yeah, one last pitch for uh, Ravello. They're, <laughs> they're, they're this not is doing, a paid sponsor, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're not doing magical dining this year, but they came up with uh, a la a tuna, which is uh, their fall menu. So it's a four course, fifty five dollars, which is a steal if you know the price. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you can do a wine pairing, I think, which is extra. So Saturday, we're going to test it out. We'll see. Nice. Okay, so so speaking of Ravello, and I'm, I've got to mention this email that <laughs> well, I got wait, this it, morning. Is this breaking news? Uh-oh. 
I got an email this morning from Dana. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, I don't nice. have a sound effect for that now. Oh, happy, happy National Guacamole Day is coming up over at Plancha. <laughs> so their freshly made guacamole will be $8 on the happy hour menu from 3 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday. And the margarita is going to be $7. Oh. I know where I'm I going. I will be more. posting. She sent me the recipe. What? For the jalapeno margarita. Oh, and I want the recipe for the I guacamole. I love and drink. The guacamole. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, there you go. So we got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, do not give it to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I used to Uber, I used to stop there uh, just to have the guacamole. So it's good. good. Oh, my. That good, oh. huh? That good. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> But, Listen, I know California is you know, a place for guacamole, but you got to come and try the plancha guacamole. We've we've tested it with other Californians, and they've agreed. That it's good. <laughs> Nine out of ten Californians. That's right. It, 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 <laughs> they don't have happy cows in Florida, but they have happy avocados. This is true. true. Well, they are close to Cuba. So you might be able to have some Cuban flair on that one. I, 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 it's I, California I, tested. It's okay. You'll like it. I got, okay. I got nothing. That's fine. Okay. I, have to, I do have one question if I can ask. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Has anybody during happy hour been able to walk down Main Street without falling over drunk? <laughs> From eating at your restaurant, having your drinks. Now, here in California, when I... There's heavy pours at in, in 33, and I have been able to walk down once, and I uh, I did have to call a cab home. <laughs> Even I was able to walk down, but I had to call a cab. I've home. never been blitzed that much. Actually. Yeah, in, in a Disney park. Need help here, Jewel needs help. I have only, I, I, I have been that way, but not at Disney, at the Mirage over in uh, Las Vegas. Mm. And that was because <laughs> I made the mistake. Of, hey, well, I'm not sorry. What happened in Vegas? What happened in Vegas? That's right. That's right. I think it was like. <laughs> I'm going to pull the Jeff Goldblum on you. Right. I, I wasn't much older than 21 and decided to try and match drinks with my parents. Yikes. Yeah, oh. in the casino, and it was a bad, bad thing. So, and now yeah, look at her toe did, to toe. To this day, if they go to that hotel, because we were there to see uh, Siegfried and Roy, because I'm a huge, huge like Tiger fan of oh. theirs, and I <laughs> fell <Jeez>. wearing heels. <laughs> this, they will still stop and take a picture of where I fell because they think it's that funny. Oh, wow. I was going to make a Tiger King joke, but I'm not. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I knew Al John was Carol Baskin. talking the gun right there for one. You got to gotta catch Carol Baskin. You got to catch Carol Baskin on Dancing with the Stars. Yep. Oh, oh my God. Carol Baskin. I'm wondering, you know, because Tony's 17 people in 22 bottles. I'm like, how the heck do y'all get back to your room or home? I'm sitting here drinking two hurricanes, and I got to get a cab home. And I didn't drink. I was a designated driver. Okay. Say, of course you were, Tony. Someone called the Uber. <laughs> right. Right. The I minivan. Think that was call pre, the minivan. I think that was pre those days. Yeah. 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 Well, I can I can tell you for sure that uh, during the Sorcerer Radio 10th anniversary. Oh, I remember this. That yeah, Jeff you and Davis Jeff. and myself were blitzed out of our mind. Nice. They just cannot. They just can't drink. They just don't have the blood, I think, no, for no. for alcohol. Because well, <laughs> I was drinking with you guys, and I was fine. And both you and Jeff were beyond loopy. Well, we were we were we and were getting I'm a started. fraction of both well, your weights. That there. Well, this is true. <laughs> however, however, we started drinking at La Cava del Tequila, and we were drinking tequila. Let's go. With, with, well, I was drinking tequila and mezcal and drinking the shooting the scorpions. Yeah. So. Okay, so his excuse is he was eating bugs. He ate a worm and a scorpion. I did okay. eat a worm and a so scorpion. So apparently yes. those are were the issue. Well, worm and scorpion yeah. is not a good base for tequila. You got to have a grilled cheese or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think we did have some, some some chips. But anyway, that that is a whole other happy hour for a whole other. Oh, that's another That's day, the next show. Day. That's the next, next show. Our best no, favorite the next bars, show right? has to be something 
something revolving around Halloween. Something, I have to. I'll, I'll come up with dark something. Side. Yeah. yeah. But we hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we post new content. We are on Anchor, so make sure you check us out there. If you want to be like our fantastic, fabulous fan, Lindsay Marie, Lindsay. you too can donate to us on Anchor anywhere from 99 cents a month to $9.99 a month. <laughs> Bubba, you want to tell everybody where they can check us out? Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't have the notes. <laughs> no, I get it right. no, you can find us on the web. Uh, dining at Disney.com. Uh, follow us on all of our social media accounts, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And for all your Disney and Universal travel needs, contact that woman, Kristen, right there at theme parks and cruises at gmail.com. You'll get a free quote and you can also book. So mention you heard about it on the Dining at Disney podcast. And then also this couple right here has a podcast every Sunday night live on Facebook called What the Disney List. The Disney so, List. And what should you guys have a topic for this week? Or not yet? Oh, for sure. We I do. don't know what it is yet, but I'm sure we have a topic. There's something cool. Hey, by the way, so, really quick. By the wait, way, really quick. Yeah. Are you gonna tease it? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you in a minute and let oh. you tease it. But I was gonna throw it to Tony and yes. let Tony tell everybody where they need to find him. Yes. Uh, DisneyParksPodcast.com. Or yeah. Disney yeah, Where do they need to find? <laughs> where do they need to find you? <laughs> You can find me on Instagram <laughs> at catastrophe, C A T underscore A S T R O P H E. I swear that's the best name. I love it. It is the and best. And Jewel, how about you? Uh, you can check me out on Instagram at Pixie Magic Disneyland. Love it. Al John? Once again, the DisneyList.com. Uh, also. Al John Go on Instagram and soon, coming soon, a brand new podcast coming. It is Ooh. Little Rock Podcast with me, Al John Go, alongside former Disney animator and director of special projects, Dave Bosser. Are we're, you kidding me? No I'm way. Not kidding you. So we're going to be talking to Don wow. Hunt. We're going to be talking to everyone from Fantasia and Nightmare Before Christmas and a bunch of pop culture stuff as well. So it's going to be an awesome podcast, Skull Rock Podcast with Dave Bossert and Al John Go launching in October. It's going to be epic. Yeah. Also, don't forget to check out our friends, WDW Park Hoppers. Unfortunately, Park Hopper John and Park Hopper Sid had a last minute thing come up that they couldn't be here uh, this time. But they will be back next month in November. No, it's not November. No, Next month is October. Woo! I'm getting ahead of myself. See, yeah. the whole year is just messed up for me. But anyway, <laughs> make sure you check out WDW Park. Mine's great. 2020. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's the best year ever. <laughs> Until next time, <laughs> I'm Kristen. With me is Bubba, Tony, Cat, Joel, and Aljon. Bon appetit, guys. Hot dog. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Bub. Happy birthday, Mr. Bub. <laughs>